This weekend's goal was to get this box truss framed out, uh, get all these pieces cut. And I got the material from a friend shop. He uses a lot of this and had a bunch of cutoffs um, that I could pick up for really cheap. Um, and this frame, this box truss, is the main support along the whole length of the pirate ship. So if we look here, you can see that box truss coming all the way back, supporting the rear axle with the wheels that actually turn the ship, supports the captain cabin, and this is just the framing for the captain cabin. Uh, the mid-level deck and the lower deck is right on top of this box truss, and it's attached to the drivetrain frame and the wheel and the captain will stand up there. So that was the goal for the weekend and here it is. 20 feet of box truss. And this gets the full length of the pirate ship. So here's the rear. This will be the back end of the pirate ship and up there is the front. Just over 26 feet tip to tail. Now I purposely left the webbing out in here because I don't know where the rear axle is going to go. Um, I don't know the full weight of the vehicle because I don't know what the material I'm using for the mast and the decking and some other stuff. But once I know the final weight of the vehicle, I can position that rear axle where I want it so that it, I can distribute the load um, between the rear and the front. My goal is to keep about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds on that front wheel and to keep the whole ship around 3,500 to 4,000 pounds or 4,500 pounds max um, depending on what extra stuff goes on to it. But ironically, um, people load will be about 5,000 pounds of people load so the whole vehicle fully loaded is sitting at around 5 tons so pretty, pretty massive. Got the drivetrain frame attached to the main support truss today. There's a lot of uh, lining up and leveling that needs to get done to get that right. Got all the material this weekend cut for that rear cabin, so these all pieces are ready to frame out the rear captain's cabin. Got the gearbox mounted and got the end of the drive shaft on the cog milled out so that that spider coupler fits in there with that rubber spider to help align stuff but I want to use a dial indicator to align these two shafts as close as I can the better they're lined up uh, the more wear and tear I'll be able to get out of that rubber spider before it's destroyed so until then I just have the gearbox up on some washers approximate. The motor will attach here or possibly if I can find a cool pulley I'd like to put a, a unique pulley with a big fat belt and put the motor back there somewhere which is a big huge belt driving it. I think that would look really cool. Um, but not only does this get us the full length of the ship but it also shows the height of the lower deck. So this is the lower deck passenger height and you can get a feel for how high off the ground you are. And there's the front door to the house. And there's an eight foot step ladder. So it puts you pretty high off the ground standing up here. And the rear cabin um, the ship is three feet wider on each side, so the rear cabin is going to come out to about where that uh, angle iron column is, and it goes up to just barely underneath that beam right there. So, and it comes closer this way to just in front of that support there, so somewhere about there will be the front of the rear cabin. And then the mid level stage will come out even further, so uh, mid level and then upper uh, cabin. This is the mount for the crow's nest that needs to be able to be bolted on for transportation. Um, so 
this splice pl or this plate um, a couple bolts on it well has some truss go up and then somewhere right about there um, will be uh, the little bucket where the navigator sits so it's kind of exciting to get some stuff in here to establish scale on the ship how high off the ground you are, how long it is so it's a pretty cool weekend as far as stuff getting done so and until next weekend